without further ado, I'm going to bring on Sam. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we got there in the end. <laughs> it worked. It worked. Yeah. How are you going? Thanks for joining me. Oh, thank you for asking. Tell me a bit about the show because it looks amazing. Um, with your still life works, I mean, they're so serene. They're so calm. Um, and, you know, I, it, each time I'm presuming you have got an idea of, of a body of work can you tell me about this one each body of work kind of flows into the next one I think what I what I respond to is what's happening to me around me at the time so we moved to Albany 10 years ago and uh, it was only once I got down here in this particular environment that I started to pay attention more to what was happening around me because across the road was this amazing red gum um, that I see every day from my window from the kitchen window and from from the house and it when we arrived it was in blossom and so it, it was like a beacon it was like a a warning sign and it's an indigenous plant to this area so there's quite a lot of red gum so i started to notice other red gum around and then there were other banks years that i started to notice and, and it was at a time when i was looking i was i was at home a lot and i was noticing things I was noticing things I have found this year that the exhibition is mostly with pairs of things so two objects rather than three and even some of the little ones behind me conveniently placed <laughs> um, you can see where I've got the two together and because it's not so much about the objects themselves often it's about the spaces in between and the tensions between those objects um, and a word that my sister used last night when we were discussing things are uh, vibrations between those objects and how they respond to each other. And that comes through to some of the other meanings in the paintings with um, some of the relationships. So not just the, the obvious spatial relationships, uh, but also with some of the objects having um, meanings contained within them from the people who own them or made them or the stories around those people who own those objects that people have lent to me. Well, can you tell me a bit about one of the things that I love about your work is, um, as I've said, you know, this calm feeling, which I think has got a lot to do with a quite a restrained palette and um, then bringing in like a, like maybe one or two colours that really just pop out. My palette? <laughs> I don't know yeah. Oh gosh, right. yes. Um, oh, these yeah. are all the colours I use, and um, I, you know, no, there's nothing restrained about that palette. Yes. Now, are there any earth colours there? I'm I, quite because I, cause I so use much. I use um, uh, burnt sienna for my um, underpainting, and um, I find that's a beautiful, warm colour, and I also. So use a bit of um, burnt umber. I really like that, and then yellow ochre. So, oh, okay, right. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. And then you've got a few reds there, right? And oh, that's because I was doing some. Um, what was I doing? I was doing. Oh, I, I, there's a little magnolia on the wall behind me. So yeah, I had the pinks and the reds, so I could work on that. Yeah, um, yeah right. Right. Oh, right. And there's like. As people have seen in the video, there's big expanses of what appears to be like a monochrome sort of area. Yeah, but you no, can tell when you go close, no, it is not. It, there is no, so much my, colour in that. My, that's, it gets a real shimmer to it, the backgrounds, because um, I, I have about sometimes up to five layers of colour. So I, my first layer is uh, the underpainting. And then I gradually... I put I sort of block in one layer of color over and I find that then the burnt sienna comes through and I kind of want to knock that back a bit and so then I'll put subsequent layers of paint over the top so the backgrounds will often have um, four layers and I like especially in the with the canvas so I like to use quite a toothy canvas um, so that I can use the tooth with a drier brush to uh, to scumble the paint across the surface so that the other colours can kind of come through in little gaps and um, it's not just one colour and each little patch is like I, I, I actually don't pre-mix my colours, I mix as I go and I sort of mix slight variations to the colours as needed as I go across the surface and so that's why it 
it's got those sort of um, those tonal subtle tonal changes throughout the whole thing so is that you're thinking about light uh, the light source and the way the light is hitting that background when you do uh, that yes my darker areas are generally thinner layers and the lighter areas have got more paint on them so the opacity with the lighter tones and the transparency with the darker tones um, but I'm just I'm feeling my way across the canvas I'm feeling my way um, as I paint, I've got a plan, but I, I still adjust in stages so that I can make the changes I need to make to make the effect that I'm looking for. And sometimes I get it and sometimes I don't. And that's why I have to work back into it a few times sometimes. Yeah. And it's just, I tend, and I tend to get gradually lighter and lighter. So the, I tend to always finish with a lighter tone in the background. So it starts off darker and I gradually increase the lightness for each layer um, because I fit, find that that achieves a greater sense of depth than having a dark colour over a light. That tends to make the paint look dirty um, when I, the way I work it. So for the clean, uh, the, cl the clarity of the colour, I work light towards the do you, end. Do you have to wait for it to dry. I mean, I'm asking all these technical questions. About, I hope no, it's okay. It's about five days. Um, depending okay. on the so I really, if I've got lots of time, I like to use a stand oil based medium. And if I am running out of time, then I use a Gaukard. Um, so fast drying medium. So it allows me um, to manipulate my times, but oil paints, not easy to manipulate your times, but I can. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, if I'm getting close to a deadline, I'll tend to change to a Gaukard. Does it leave room for error? Like, can you wipe off a layer if you need to? I have been known to scrape stuff back. I wipe off a layer if I try and oil out too quickly, and that's happened before, um, where I didn't leave enough days and I oiled it out. Um, and by oiling it out and wiping the oil, the, the medium back, I accidentally wiped off the whole final layer of paint and so I had to repaint it so but that's okay yeah I can like it back that happen very often though no sounds like no sounds like you're pretty you've got it under control most of the time um yeah I tend to not I don't paint with a lot of paint um each layer I tend to almost be a bit conservative <laughs> sometimes and I find that working on the canvas makes me more put more paint on because I need more paint to get the coverage I need and so that means, yeah, I, I've, and I like board for smaller works because I can get detail if I want to. But for the canvas works, I like the fact that I can't get much detail because it's toothy and that it's all um, an optical illusion thing going on um, with all the different layers and all the soft edges sort of uh, working together. I don't work from life because I never know how long I can actually work on a painting before the flowers die so that's kind of I've had to sort of capture a moment because the nuttiness of family life will come in and shift things and and shift my time um, and I have to be available for all sorts yeah, of things yeah. so it allows me to work in pockets of time um, that I have available to me yeah well also the other thing is with painting the way you paint uh, you know that it can take weeks so it you know yes. even if if it was from life, it would it, it's going to change inevitably anyway. Well, Even if you weren't doing it full time, non stop, you know what I mean. If, if I was maybe. painting from life, it'd be a lot looser, heaps looser, and um, uh, the, for sure, I, I, can, I don't doubt that. But that's not how um, I'm able to work. I don't have that might come very soon. My kids are all teenagers now, so we'll see what happens there. But um, yeah. certainly. Um, my practice has evolved because I work from prints. There's no doubt, but I don't. I'm not looking for hyper realism. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for uh, a feeling, and um, uh, that's not completely still. There's still a bit of a shimmer going on. So, is there a point where you'll discard the photograph and just keep going? Uh, I still refer back to the photograph even at the end, but generally it is not in my hand. Um, I tend to stand back and look at the painting and see what the painting needs and then I'll go back in and um, use the photo to guide me where I might need to mix a particular colour. But then it, it's what happens, what turns up on the, on the canvas is what tells me what I need to do next. 
totally. And I was saying that, um, you know, it's totally different seeing your work in real life as opposed to seeing it on Instagram because, yeah. you know, it's so different. You see this yeah. tiny little thing on Instagram and then you go up close. And that's why I said, you know, I was saying to you, you can see all these colours in there yeah. that you can't really see on Instagram. No. Even when you do no. video close up, it just doesn't, you can't see no. that. And so I see with your work it, it, it really lends itself to long viewing because there is that sort of thing which makes me think you know what you know i want to ask you about the ceramics because i want to ask you how long you've been doing that this was one of the things i said when you couldn't hear me <laughs> as i was wondering that you okay so if everybody was watching that video and they couldn't hear me say anything those ceramics are i mean i think you've only been doing it for the last few years oh, is that right no. I, um, I learned to throw when I was at high school. I had an excellent art teacher who, who I... gave us lots of education. And then my background is as an art, um, a high school art teacher. So I taught in schools for 16 years. And in that time, I was always teaching it as well. And I, I keep coming back to it. It's, um, I, I, it touches my life in some way. And then I move away from it because it can get very addictive in its own way, <laughs> ceramics. And I've come back to it again because it's. Um, I've joined the local uh, community pottery group, and that's brought um, greater community to my life. Um, so it's quite an important part of my practice. And there's a lot of really beautiful on-the-spot exchange of technique and um, and ideas that I really enjoy. Yeah, I, I I've, I've got a theory about um, ceramicists and painters because I did. I, well, I used to go to a lot of painting classes, but then I did an, a ceramics course a couple of times. And there's something about pottery, people who do ceramics, but they're so nice. Like, they were so nice to everybody. <laughs> and down like, to earth everybody, aspect of it. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it brings it out in everybody, this yeah. very sort of calm, grounded thing and this beautiful atmosphere in the room. I, and I, I hear that in your voice when you're saying that, your experience with it too. Yeah, it's a, big, it's, it's a big part, which is why I like to make my own vessels and bring them into my paintings because it sort of is, again, part of living here. Um, and um, not, I don't always have successes. I'm holding a little vase now. It's um, one of the little ones I've recently had fired and I'm exploring some local, um, some WA clays. Um, and this is a Kim's line buff clay. So um, it's great because I get to experiment and play with this sort of thing. But also uh, my, my clay colleagues around me have got beautiful work and I get to collect from them as well. So if there's something that they've made that's got a beautiful texture or it's got an amazing shape or both, um, it's kind of sometimes it comes to live with me and sometimes I get to borrow it, which is nice. So, um, yeah. yeah, I just get to experiment experiment with quite a few things and well when you see those like a vessel does it suggest to you what shape plant should go in that oh, absolutely. or can you imagine straight away yeah, yeah absolutely for instance the um in my paintings i for this show i have been exploring um this the meaning behind an amphora and I don't have an I don't have it here it's um and it's very sort of very, very top heavy and this particular one is by an artist called Emma Lindegaard she's a Perth potter and this piece was lent to me um and it was it, it was lent to me with a story behind it um it came it came sort of at a time in my life when somebody had a very um rocky relationship and so again it sits in that whole concept of relationships and that the amphora itself is a container and it's meant to contain things and it's got meaning as um, like containing um, not just produce but also containing human remains that's part of its history and as a few as a funeral uh, container of ashes and things like that and given that ashes are also part of clay the making of glazes um, it's it's all sort of wound up in each other and so when i paired it with a particular pomegranate um because the pomegranate has symbolism about fertility and female fertility and then this very sort of female shape of the amphora next to it but it's also very dark color and so the two 
sort of working together, they sort of echoed each other's shapes, mirrored almost, and yet the symbolism of the two working together gave it, gave it extra um, depth for me. Now, I was really interested in that um, exercise that you were involved in, that show that you are involved in, what the inspiration, was it Inspiration? Oh, inspiration, yes. 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 That was so um, great. Hang on. That's oh, the, great. Um, yes. That's the painting that was the inspiration. So um, New England Regional Art Museum invited me to take part in this show where you selected a work from their collections and then you made um, an artwork in response to that work and um because it's citrus um in this beautiful margaret ollie painting margaret ollie basket of oranges lemons and jug 1964 um and it's oil on board and so i made a painting of the mandarins that were growing in our garden it was beautiful to see how you were inspired by that work but in your own way and it was quite a, a sparse sort of just two was it two sort of uh mandarins or two so tweets two, of mandarin yeah yeah, and, and our little Mandy's are little and um, because we didn't we didn't prune the tree so that the Mandy's that were the left were grew nice, big and fat. So we had these very fine leaves and fine little Mandy's that I placed because that when you put them in a vase, the, the heaviness of the mandarin would just make everything get good and fall. Well, exactly. <laughs> and so exactly. That's right. Yeah. I had a little flower, uh, a flower frog, um, a heavy weight with little spikes on it to poke um, flowers in, um, and that came from my mother-in-law. And um, so, yeah, so so that's how I did it. And the fact that they, they, I didn't mean it to happen. It was just when I was playing, I saw that the arches of the leaves sort of crossed over and then sort of echoed a bit of the basketry that was going on here. And then I also took. Um, the fact that there's a very prominent blue, um, I made sure to work uh, touches of that blue through my painting as well to really get that complementary happening. Um, what a yes. great exercise. Oh, I love that idea. Fun. Good fun. And, you know, I mean, you must have, did they, did you go with them into their stock room? Well, not stock well, room, I was, what do they call it? Yeah, no, I did because last year I had an exhibition there with, um, uh, I had a solo show there and it was with Alison, Bellinger Gallery, um, AK Bellinger Gallery. And um, uh, while I was staying there, because they were so kind and so lovely, and I got to stay in their artist in residence flat downstairs. Oh. Um, so I stayed there for a couple of nights, and Belinda Hungerford took me through because I was just blown away by the Margaret Ollies there. Um, and so she took me into the stock room and pulled out the the um the wall with all the paintings on it and that painting was there so when she invited me to take part in this show i said well there's just no choice oh, i oh I, the yeah what a great the, the new england um regional art museum is in armadale and um margaret ollie was quite a prominent uh uh giver of artworks to them and so uh, not her work she would often donate work to them i believe and that she believed in the importance of regional art galleries and so she was very supportive of them um and then they have also uh, got in their collection um, a couple of others including uh, the very big beautiful yellow room that i sat in front of at the time um, and did some paintings or, or little oh. gouache study and it was just a, such a brilliant experience so it was good fun yeah do you think do you think sort of it's important to sort of fill your tank by going and responding to great works that you see in galleries yeah I, the trip that i took recent in the last couple of weeks to sydney and canberra was essentially a family trip but it i managed to squeeze in some some visits to other galleries and um as i was saying to you earlier i did manage to see uh the elizabeth cummings exhibition at the national art school and that was unreal uh, the space was sensational but, um and surrounded by these amazing paintings that you just can't tell from from a 2D surface, um, and never have been. So being in front of the original artwork is always the best. And so it was yeah. good, good for me to see how the, the paint's been applied and how the colours interact with one another. Well, uh, you've got an opening celebrations next Thursday night, I think, is that right? I think it's open Yeah, that's to... right, um, on the 19th of October. 
at six o'clock. Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Vanessa and Miranda. I met Miranda, the manager, and Vanessa there yesterday. They're so lovely. lovely. Um, if anybody wants to go and, you know, you can talk to them about all the works. And, I mean, if you're lucky enough that there are any left. But <laughs> <laughs> they are pretty amazing. And, it's, look, it's worth just going and having a look. If you're in Perth, make sure you go and see it because it's oh, yes, out. Oh, yes, I think I'm, I'm so excited to be at the gallery. That's just that. That it's my first exhibition in that beautiful front room space, and I'm um, very excited. Can't wait to see it myself because, of course, I don't live in Perth at the moment. I'm five hours away, and so That's I'm right. really looking forward to seeing it. But the gallery have been wonderful, really, really delightful to work with. Yeah, they're great. They're great. Well, thanks so much, Sam, for joining me. I love catching up with you. It's really fantastic. Well, thanks. Um, and good luck with your work. Okay. Thank you. And thanks for bearing with me with all the technical yeah. stuff. <laughs> well, thanks for bearing with me. It was my phone that cut out. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay. I'll catch Thank you soon. All right. Bye. See you. How brilliant. Oh, I was, I've, you know what? I've been following Sam for years and um, I've always thought to myself, you know, I have to catch up with, with Sam Dennison and we've been, you know, DMing over the years as well and, uh, I've always admired her work. And so to see it in real life, I tell you what, it is, it's just a totally different experience. And it's really actually given me a bit of inspiration as well. So um, thanks so much for joining me, everybody, for this chat. And um, hope to uh, catch up with you soon. Bye.